Okay, so let's look at a practical example of how we can actually use Vector Math in Maya. What I want to do in the scene is I've got, basically I've got a point A, and I've got a point B, and I've got a midpoint. Now what I want to do is I want to create a node setup that basically makes sure that this is always in the center between these two. Now I could do this with a point constraint, but um, that would defeat a bit of the purpose here. And um, there's a couple of other implications that I really want to go through here as well. Okay, so let's kind of think this through. What do we actually need to do here to be able to put this in between here by just using vector math? Well, what we need to do, right, is we need to find the the vector that goes between these two and scale it. So let's just kind of demo that by if I go from here to here and I just make sure that I've got my scale here. Now if I let me just so if I were to scale this to 0.5 that's exactly where I want to be with the locator. That's halfway in between these two. Uh, I can prove that by just doing a point constraint as well. And maintain offset. So you can see now it is spot on right in between. So I'll just undo that point constraint. Now then the question becomes how do we actually get this vector right? Well, first let's draw up the the vectors that we have here. Because this is what we kind of covered earlier as well. We have a couple of points, but we can make vectors that goes from the origin to those points as well. And that's basically the vectors that we're going to be manipulating. So if we make that, I'll just put that underneath with the same color to make them look a bit pretty. And we'll make this one, put that underneath here as well. So how do we make, I'll just do this in between here, right? Because basically what we need to figure out is we need to create this vector somehow. I'm going to put this here. Well, what if we're looking at this now, what if we basically take this vector and we do this. Huh. Well, that looks like we got to that point. So what did we actually do now? Well, what we did is we got the distance by how you do normally with things, right? You take, you take your last point and you subtract the first point. Or you take the first vector and you subtract the, sorry, you take the second vector and you subtract the first vector. Because if we did it the other way around, if we took the first vector and then subtracted the second one, we would basically be getting, we'd be getting the same one, but you can see that we would be getting it in the other direction, right? It would be going from the final point to the other vector. So so we have to make sure that we basically get this vector and then we subtract this and then we'll get this point here. So let's try and do that now. And I'm just going to clean up all these extra curves that's shown up here. So how can we do that with nodes? Well, we'll use trusty old plus minus average. Because plus minus average has the lovely input 3D, which is basically X, Y, and Z, which is exactly what we need for this. So we'll input translate, and then we'll take point A, and we'll input that into the second there. And now, if we take the output 3D and put that into translate, it should end up here, and it's not, of course, because we haven't changed to subtract and boom. Now you can see it fits there immediately perfect.
Well, that's awesome. So how do we now get this from here to up here? Well, that's what we said in the beginning, right? As soon as we have this vector, what we have to do is we have to add this to up here. And how do we do that? Well, we take another plus minus average. So we'll do plus minus average. And then remember now we have to first travel along this vector and then add that vector that we just realized. Oh, sorry, that we just found. So we'll take the translate A to our input 3D. We'll take the output from this into the second slot. And we'll take the output here and connect into our translate. And now, if I just rotate this, you can see that we have our little, I'm gonna hide these. If I now move the point B, if I just scale that up a bit, you can see that our midpoint is following along. And even though, even where we move this, our math is still working. So they always gets that vector and always adds that vector. So all of that stuff is, is working correctly. But we're missing the fact that we're not putting it in the middle here. Well, what was that we said earlier? And that's basically, as soon as we have our vector here, what we have to do is we have to scale it as well, right? We have to scale it down to 0.5 to be able to get to that midpoint. So what was that vector? Well, it's the one that we figured out here, right? Uh, so let's now do a multiply divide so that we can take that value coming out of here because the multiply divide has x, y, and z as well. So we can just take that straight in there. We can take the output and we can pipe that in here instead. So nothing's happening now just yet. But if we now change this, huzzah, set that to 0.5 and boom, we are now right in between there. So if I just hide these because they won't follow, if we now move this, we can see that that point is now always going to be right in the middle of these, no matter where we put it, because we're always calculating that that new those vectors from here to here, you know, all that, we're always figuring that out. And the real nice thing about this now as well is something that you can't do with a point vector, sorry, a point constraint, um, talking too much about vectors. What you can't do with a point constraint setup is that you, you can't do this with a point constraint. The really nice thing is because we figured out the matrix, sorry, the vector here now, we can scale that as much as we want. So we can push this past this whole thing. And um, this might be useful for, I don't know, if you have a rifle set up, you could have, um, you know, a starting and an end point. You know, this could be a hit point or, you know, if you want to make sure that um, what you're doing to be able to go past it, or if you want to like be able to overshoot some animation at times, this could be a really way, a great way of doing it. Now, this isn't the only reason why I wanted to cover this. Another really important thing about this as well is that what you've just seen here now is blend shape math. If you think of these um, points here, all of these as uh, a vertex, this is exactly what happens in the blend shape node to calculate the, uh, the changing of the blend shape. So if we instead said that instead of this being like point A, this could be your like mesh vertex, right? It could be like your your def your starting point, and this would be your target vertex. So like on a on a target blend shape, right? If if you sculpted something and this is where you wanted it to, and what we're calculating here, like that difference between them, that is what we call as the delta, right? In in blend shapes. And what we're doing here with this multiplication, well, that's the envelope, right? And this final thing here, that's the final vertex position, All right? So if we just do that, so 
this is straight up blend shape math. And I, I, I all like when I first learned this, I thought it was so cool and I, I couldn't get enough of it. Right. We set this to one and that basically means that we're at the target vertex, right? We're following that perfectly and set that to zero. We're following the input and then any blending in between here will go straight there. So I hope this kind of opens up your eyes a bit to the kind of like the power of vertex math, sorry, vector math. Um, because behind most of the nodes, pretty much every single node that you're working with, there will be vector math, there will be matrix math that we'll, we'll cover a bit later. But these are the core pillars of computer graphics and a lot of the deformation and operations that is happening in your rigs already. It's just happening behind the scenes. It's kind of like hidden away from you a bit. And as soon as you understand that you can be able to break that down, you suddenly have the power to really open up your rigs and streamline them, optimize them. You could really hack some things together that you can't really do now because you're you're limited by the nodes that you're using. So I really hope this was um, a bit of like an eye opener. Um, it might not be the super flashiest one, but we'll go on to some more interesting examples uh, coming up.